Hey folks, welcome to The Connection. I'm your host, Pastor Jason Palmer. Great to have you with me. We are close to Easter. Easter will be this Sunday. We are looking forward at Foothills Worship Center to a powerful move of God on Easter Sunday. And I hope you are too as well. Some people call it Resurrection Sunday, which I think is probably a better term than Easter Sunday. But uh, I love uh, I love that time of the year when it comes around that we get to celebrate the victory of Jesus Christ. Absolutely wonderful. It's, uh, you know, of course, one of my favorite times of the year anyway, because winter time is coming to an end. Spring is coming on. New life is coming. And that's what the resurrection is all about. It's about new life. And uh, in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, Paul says that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. That word, uh, or that word, uh, I may know him in the power of his resurrection. Not in, excuse me, I had it backwards. Um, suggests that the power of the resurrection is an ongoing thing. If, if he had said in the power, then that would have been a one-time thing and it was done and finished. But the power of the resurrection, it, it, even though Christ rose from the grave one time, it is a continual process that's taking place in the life of the believer. So we're, the Bible says that we're being renewed daily, that we're being changed and transformed on, I believe, a daily basis as we begin our, our as we begin to walk with the Lord and we begin to, you know, fellowship with God, there's changes that are taking place within us. And that's what resurrection is all about. Resurrection is about change. And so I want to go to Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. And Philippians chapter 3 is, um, as you read down through the chapter, it's almost one scripture is the progression of another. And I'm going to kind of jump in the middle of something here that Paul is talking about. Because if I was to go back a couple verses and start there, and then move my way down, we'd be we'd be here for hours talking about it. And I know you don't want to be here for hours. So um, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. I mean, uh, it's it's hard not to start before that and read it. And, uh, you know, I, I tell you what, we're just going to read it. We're going to read it. We're not going to talk about the other scriptures, but we're going to read it because I think it's powerful. He said in verse 7, But what things were gained to me, these things I've counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge, and that's key right there, of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And I count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Verse 10 is our key verse. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection and in the and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Now, we're going to explain some of that, but I love going back up to verse, verse 8. He said that I count all things as lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ. I'm not gaining the knowledge of Christ. One, one thing that Paul says here, he says that I may know him. That I may know him. And, you know, as a believer, we, we may say, you know, hey, I know, I, know, I know Christ. I know Jesus. I know Jesus. But Paul, Paul, Paul wasn't looking for just a general knowledge of, of Jesus Christ. Paul was looking for how to become like him. Which I think is the, the that's the key point to this to this whole chapter is the fact of it's not just knowing who Christ is, but to become like Christ. And I think that is the, that is the goal of Christ to to for us to become like Him. That is the ultimate goal is for us to be like Him. You know, Paul made the statement. He said, "Follow me as I follow Christ." In other words, he says, "I'm seeking after who He is, and I want you to follow me in that same pursuit." And I, I think that's I think that's powerful and it's i think it's it's an heroic thing i think it's a, a tremendous tremendous thing to do you know and what a responsibility by paul to live the kind of life that says listen i'm going to live like this because i want to know him so follow me as i do this and you can become the same thing and the, and the thing that paul is talking and he's saying is that it's not impossible to become like christ it is not impossible. You know, you, you hear you hear people make that mis mistake. I call it a mistake, and it is a mistake, and I think it's it's uh, a mistake to say it. Is that well, I I, I can't I can't really change because 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not God. I'm not God. Yes, the thing of it is we can change. Christ came in the flesh to live like a man, to show us how to live for God. And one of the keys to the way Jesus lived his life with such victory and such purity is the fact that he was one with God. He was in tune with God. He, he was absolutely connected in the spirit to the mind and the will of heaven. And I think that's what Paul, as he's talking about the resurrection here, he's talking about this This is our way, folks. This is how we get to become Christ-like. This is how we get to become the sons of God. And so, you know, when he, when he talks about this, he talks about two elements, suffering and resurrection. And both of those two things lead to a conclusion. And, you know, when we talk about the power of the resurrection, it is a spiritual experience that has an outward and an inward uh, expression of transformation. The power of the resurrection, the power of salvation, the message. You know, and, and we, we had a guest minister uh, last Sunday, uh, Prophet Steve Grimsley, and, and it was so true what he said. He said, without the resurrection, he said the cross, the cross would have been in vain. Everything that Jesus taught, everything that he did would have been in vain if there had not been a resurrection. So I think the resurrection is the focal point of, of the, 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 the idea or power of the gospel of salvation is that all of this stuff is possible because of this one thing right here. God came in flesh, died for us on the cross, but didn't stay in the grave. He was buried in the tomb. He didn't stay there. He rose. The, Jesus even said this statement. He said, I have the authority to lay my body down and I have the power to raise it back up. And he did that. He did exactly that. He allowed himself to be crucified. He died. He rose himself back from the grave. It's, it's a powerful, amazing story. I mean, it's, it's an absolute triumph over everything that we could ever imagine. Every sin, every disease, every circumstance, every devil in hell, over everything that had been planned from the beginning of time by the enemy to destroy the plan of God, Jesus Christ emerged from all of that with tremendous, absolute, complete finality of the greatest victory you've ever seen in your life. And we get to share in that victory. That is what is so powerful and amazing is we get to be a part of it. And this is how Paul lines it out. So listen, to become like Jesus requires two things, suffering and resurrection suffering and resurrection and and paul says this he said that i may that i might know him that word know means to learn and i think even even a greater description of the word know is to perceive perceive that 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 that, that talks about that mentions your spiritual senses being heightened that's, that's talking about walking in the spirit perception to perceive it to to sense it to feel it to know to begin to learn the ways of Christ. It's like being, it's like when, when you're in the spirit, uh, when, you're, when you're in church and you're worshiping or, or praying or you're preaching or ministry and you're walking in the anointing and you're walking in the spirit, your spiritual senses are heightened. You see more, you know more, you feel more. And so I believe this is the idea that Paul is trying to convey to us tonight is that he said, if we're going to know him, he said, if we're going to tap into the essence of who he is, he said, then it's got to come two ways. It's got to happen two ways. If we're going to sense him the way that we need to sense him, not just say, yeah, I believe Jesus is here. It's like, man, I know he's here. Because I can feel him. I can, I know he's here. I can sense him in my spiritual senses because there's something about as we draw closer to God, as we draw closer to Him, our spiritual senses are heightened. And that is the only way that we can get to know Christ. He said through suffering and through resurrection. Now, Paul mentions the power of his resurrection, which is so true. But the thing that precedes the resurrection is death. But we're, we're going to get to that. And that ties into the suffering. So let's, let's start with the suffering. You know, we talk about the suffering. It means he talks about the fellowship of his suffering or the participation of the things that Christ went through. Now, now Paul says in verse 8, he said, I have suffered the loss of all things, he said, 
everything. He said, let me, let me read it. I won't get it wrong. He said, for, I, for yet indeed I also count all things lost, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. So Paul, as you know, as you read the story about Paul, Paul went through a lot. Paul, and you know, there's no telling what Paul gave up before he ever really became well known in the church. There's no telling during those early years, you know, when he, when he went to Damascus and then he went out into the desert and he spent time out in the desert. And it was in that moment that he was out in the desert of Arabia that a lot of the gospel came to him, which is absolutely amazing. I mean, tremendous, powerful revelation from God. Think about that. That's another, goodness gracious, that's another hour more talking about stuff like that. But, you know, that kind of stuff excites me because Paul, Paul talks about he received his message of the gospel and you know he went out preaching this and it was years later he comes back and says well this is what i've been preaching and the apostle said hey man you got it right you know why because paul said that jesus himself taught him what he what he preached and so man that's like that's just like absolutely wonderful amazing beautiful and so paul has this tremendous experience and paul as as no telling what i could say what he had to give up before he ever really became who he was but then he goes on to talk about in different parts of the gospels how he suffered this he suffered that i mean a tremendous chapter uh, i think it's in corinthians where it talks about it goes through the list of all things that you know being a night and day in the deep being beat with rods and whipped and stoned and all this stuff that we can read about in the scriptures you know and he suffered this stuff he said i suffered the loss of everything and here's another fact paul gives up his personal freedom to to dedicate his entire life to the preaching of the gospel. And so, you know, Paul understood suffering. So he's talking about the participation of suffering, the fellowship of suffering or the participation of suffering. And the thing of it is, when we think about suffering, we're like, oh man, I don't really want to go through all that stuff. I mean, I like Paul and all, but I don't want to go through what Paul went through. I don't, I'm not looking to become a Paul, you know? I just want to be a good saint of God, but you know, the thing of it is, Paul saw the value of what he had to give up and what he had to go through. He saw the value of it. And I think sometimes that's one of our issues are we just see the pain. We just see the, you know, the veracity of the conflict and the ill and all the mess and gar garbage that we got to deal with. But instead, Paul looks at this thing and says, wow, this is really valuable. Why? Because... One of the ways that you get to know somebody or that you can associate with somebody is to go through what they went through. Paul said to some people who were who were trying to give him a hard time, he said, leave me alone. He said, I bear in my body the marks of the Lord. Paul said, man, I've been there. You know, and I know, you know, physically, Paul went through a lot of this stuff. And, you know, we probably won't go through that same kind of stuff because we're not in the same era, in the time, culture as Paul was in his day. But yet spiritually, we can go through some of the same things spiritually and suffer. I mean, we all suffer. We all have suffered. We all have gone through stuff and dealt with pain and hurt and from many sources and many different avenues. I mean, we've all dealt with it. But he talks about we've got to see the value of it. We've got to see the value of it. And then he talks about the power of his resurrection. The power of his resurrection. And, and that is absolute triumph because preceding the resurrection was death on the cross. But it wasn't the end of it all. It was just setting the stage for what was to come. The cross had to happen. The suffering had to happen. I don't believe it could have, the, the end result could not have come without the suffering. Jesus had to die on the cross. In order to have a resurrection, you have to have died. So, is the suffering valuable? It sure is, because you can't have resurrection without suffering. So the, they, go, they go hand in hand. But Paul said there is a power in resurrection. There's a power in resurrection. What, what, is, what is that power of resurrection? Death has no hold on it. 
death cannot destroy what's been resurrected. Jesus, when he came out of the tomb, told, told Mary, he said, don't touch me because I, I'm not, I, I, he's going through this process. He was going through this, what I call a glorification process. And, and he told her, he said, listen, don't, don't touch me right now. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna mess up the process here. And uh, that's what happens with resurrection. The power, when Paul talks about the power of resurrection, not in resurrection, but the ongoing work of God, the work of the work of Christ, he said is ongoing. He said it is a transformation. It is a process ongoing. That's the power of it. Because as, as the more we live for God, the more we become like him, the stronger we get, the power of the transformation that is working in us, the power of regeneration, which is the power of the Holy Ghost, it is working in us to make us Christ-like, that we can know him, that we can be like him. So you got the fellowship of suffering, which is to share in the testing and the trial and the pain. But one plus one has a, a an ending. It has a meaning. It has a, has a purpose. It has one plus one equals something. So fellowship and resurrection equals what? Let's read it. That I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain the resurrection of the dead. The end result is change. That's what Paul was getting to, is the fact to listen. The more we get to know Christ, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost talking, the greater the change becomes, the greater the change becomes. Oh man, this, and I, you know, this, this to me is what is so powerful because the word conform means to take on the same characteristics. Jesus said this to his disciples, see the things that I do, so shall you also do. He said, because I go back to the Father. But he said, I'm going to send the Holy Ghost. And the day of Pentecost, they were baptized with the Holy Ghost. They spoke in other tongues. And it was from that point on that they went out and did the works that Christ did because there was transformation. There was a change. They began to take on the same characteristics because what did what did the uh, Pharisees say and, and the high priest? He said, he said they took note of them that they had been with Jesus. Why? Because they were acting like it. They were taking on, man, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. They taken on the characteristics of Christ. And that is the end game. That is the end goal. That is what God is looking for tonight. Is that when we go through suffering and we perceive the resurrection by death, that's the suffering. We go through the suffering. We end up getting resurrected. What happens? All of a sudden, we're starting to change. And we become Christ-like. That is, that is what's so amazing. That is what is the beautiful thing about this coming Sunday. What we call Easter Sunday or uh, Purim. Purim? Did I get? No. Uh, Passover. You know, uh, I, I could be getting those things wrong. Okay, so so don't don't uh, thumb thumb me down for that. But uh, <laughs> but you know that's what we love at Resurrection Sunday. The resurrect celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ and celebrating the transformation that is taking place in our life every day as we go through suffering, pain, testing, trial, hurt, misery, whatever you want to call it. Peter said, think it not strange concerning these fiery trials which you try you as though some strange thing has happened to you, but rejoice. Why? Because we're being changed into the same image and into the same likeness of Christ. Oh, hallelujah. That is what is so wonderful. That is what is so amazing about it. So you know what? Celebrate this Sunday. Celebrate. Celebrate. We got so much to celebrate about because we're going through a change. We're being transformed and we're becoming like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That in itself is worth all the suffering in the world. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being a part of the connection. Thank you for being a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, if you're a person that checks in from time to time and checks these posts out and checks out our Sunday services, 
please consider being a subscriber. We want you to be a subscriber. We want to get this word out to as many people as we can because we feel like this word is important. This word is powerful. Even as we see the day approaching, go to church, get in church, find a good church. If you're in the Newport area and you don't have a good church, listen, we're waiting for you. Foothills Worship Center, we're, we're the greatest church in town. A lot of people just don't know it yet. Come be with us on Resurrection Sunday and join in the celebration as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of the connection tonight. And until next time, stay connected with God. God bless you.